Hey folks, as you may have read from my post on LinkedIn, I didn't really enjoy Sasta that much, but there was one talk that I really, really enjoyed and it really stood out for me and I was listening captivated and taking photos for you. Um, so I wanted to share some takeaways from this talk and also how you could experiment to implement some of uh, the principles that Patrick Campbell and Alyssa Chan, the um, senior product manager at ProfitWell, mentioned in the talk about increasing pricing and how increasing pricing can be the driver of growth for your company. So first of all, the interesting tidbit that really captured my attention in the talk was that companies that change their pricing often um, have a higher ARPU, so average revenue per user. And that is really, when you think about it, quite um, intuitive. So companies that often change their pricing probably work on more feature releases, on more UX upgrades that drive more value and justify the price increases. They probably in general have more of an experimentation mindset and they are looking for this sweet spot where they are able to generate the most revenue per user because you may unwittingly be, for instance, underpricing yourself or overpricing your product in your market and thus deterring your ICPs. And also, if these companies change their prices, usually upwards, often, it means they are rapidly going up market. And what happens when you go up market is that you attract fewer customers, but um, ones that provide you with a higher average contract value, so ACV per year and typically stay with you for longer. So typically sign annual rather than monthly contracts. So it allows you to have more runway and more financial predictability. So now um, how to achieve this extra growth by changing your pricing. So Patrick mentioned three ways um, how you should do that. And I'm going to mention one um, that I kind of came up with as a bit of a modification of the third one. So first of all, you should be aware of um, the willingness to pay in the different regions where you're selling your product. So essentially, you should localize your pricing. Localizing your pricing means that you adapt it to how much the customers, the ICPs in the particular region are willing to pay. And I was, for instance, surprised that in the UK where I live, um, people are 17%, okay, not 17% more likely, they're willing to pay you 17% more um, for your product than um, the people in the US, like um, comparable audience. Um, and in Scandinavia, so, you know, Denmark, Sweden, Norway, they're willing to pay 27% more. Um, well, conversely, in the country where I come from, um, Poland, um, which is in Eastern Europe, people are willing to pay 8% less than um, in the US. So what that means is that if you have one pricing for every region, you're kind of underpricing or overpricing yourself and you're leaving money on the table because the people who were willing to pay you more would have paid you more but you didn't ask them to so of course they won't pay you more um and then people who were actually willing to pay you less will probably not buy your product as much as they could so again you need to test and see where you know is that golden middle between um the highest price and the most um, users that are going to sign up for your product. Okay, what are the other um, what are the other reasons? Uh, sorry, not reasons, but um, ways how you can increase your growth with adjusting your pricing. Well, the first one I actually mentioned um, in the explanation why price changes. Um, increase your ARPU. So actually localization was the second one. Um, and then there is the third one, um, which is quite controversial when you think about it. So Patrick said, don't grandfather 
your old users on like the legacy pricing. And I know a lot of you won't agree with that and would think that your customers will feel offended or would churn. So Patrick included a template of an email he sends to his customers when he wants to increase his pricing. And that email explains basically the value and for bigger customers can be super personalized. Um, the value of the extra features in uh, profit well and how these features actually um, yeah, improve the experience for the user and how much they are worth. And also explains that, well, um, in order to continue producing features like that, they need to charge more. And then adds a very human PS, uh, which says essentially if this affects you personally or your company, let's talk and we'll figure something out. A very good example of an email you could use. Um, on the other hand, I started thinking like, hey, how about you just limit the usage of these new value driving features um, either by time or by usage, and then you ask the users you rolled out these features to to upgrade. And of course, some of you may say, well, only some of your customers will upgrade then, not all of them. Um, like what would happen if you just increase the prices for all? But then maybe you actually produce more goodwill. Um, and if nobody upgrades or if very few people upgrade, then maybe the features you have launched didn't actually drive that much value. And then you need to ask yourself, have you fallen into the build trap? Um, and if you haven't done that yet, sign up for the talk with Melissa Perry below. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing you there. Now, let me know if this was interesting or helpful to you. And if you've ever um, gone through a price increase and how you handled it, I'm very curious to hear your thoughts and see you all next week. Bye bye.